Ambassador Jimmy Kulker is here, the Assistant Secretary for Global Affairs with HHS. Thank you very much for joining us. Great to be here. When we talk about your title, this global title, we know HHS is focused greatly on domestic health, right. but there is truly a focus on global as well. Why? Right. Well, HHS and the U.S., of course, huge global actors in uh, public health, and there are challenges and opportunities abroad for which we have capacity within HHS to address them, and of course, Things that happen overseas very much affect us. We were reminded of that in Ebola and now Zika, that um, you can't build a wall against pathogens. So uh, we need to be engaged internationally in order both to protect the health of the American people and because we really do have some expertise that isn't just valuable in the domestic context but can save lives around the world. And you have a vast experience. How do you think global health has changed over the last decade? Well, one aspect is that so many poor people are in middle-income countries, but even the poorest countries now are looking for technical partnerships. The, the concept of donor-recipient relations and of foreigners running primary health care programs in, in developing countries is very much last century. And it's a sweet spot for HHS because we have the world's best experts on staff, and so many countries are interested in, can we bring the best people to train capacity in those countries? And CDC, NIH, FDA are all responding to those requests and are more than ever engaged internationally because they're, they find counterparts and we can build capacity in countries that up to now have been weak links perhaps in the chain for surveillance and detection. Can you give us some specific examples of that global health diplomacy in action? Sure. Well, with Sika, I was really privileged in February this year to lead the U.S. delegation at the request of the two presidents, uh, then President Dilma Rousseff and Brazil and President Obama, to get the best people from CDC, from NIH, from FDA, from BARDA, our vaccine development agency, to Brazil first to validate what they were doing in their response to Zika, but also to hold some institutions accountable so that relationships in vaccine development, in sample sharing, in communicating health priorities would be shared. And we put together a 14-point action plan. And as the Brazilian system more or less evaporated, those institution-to-institution -institution cooperations were resilient and continued. And the sense that we were together in the fight against Zika was a great example of how you bring a diplomat to add value to what the technical and scientific people can do much better than any diplomat can do. And there Ebola as well, the ability to set up the Monrovia Medical Unit to treat healthcare workers in Liberia was a game changer in that many of the NGOs, Liberians themselves, were willing to go into the Ebola treatment centers because there was a center with world-class care that we were able to staff from HHS to get permission to practice medicine, to prescribe drugs, to have housing, to have water at these centers, all required a lot of diplomacy, but uh, it, the result was that Liberia was uh, accelerated their defeat of Ebola. And that is great. You, you talk about these Zika and Ebola, and these are unforeseen health crises right. and the importance of coming together in order to really address them because something else will come up after this. And, and one thing we've done also is to try to reform WHO, the failure of WHO to be the organization we needed in the sense of especially the Ebola outbreak meant that they needed to reorganize, but also to get a new head of steam and how they work with partners. And because I got to co-chair the drafting for a huge Ebola special session resolution at WHO to set up a framework for what we, the member states, thought they needed to do to respond to the next crisis. Wonderful. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here.